no one gets rich without marketing especially if you run a business you cannot run a business without marketing now i struggled with this same syndrome or whatever you call it and i'm going to explain in this video for nine years in my business for nine years in my business i couldn't make even a thousand dollars yeah you heard me right i couldn't make a profit of a thousand dollars for nine years in business because of this i'm being vulnerable and that's why we are here all right if you're ready for this why it scares the shit out of you why you grow cold feet when it's time to market your own business even though you don't mind marketing for other people then this is the video for you and don't go anywhere okay so world over marketing sales are things that a lot of people shy away from their life oh my god i mean there's a phenomenon in my country i think the same with yours where people just say oh my god this person has gotten a job and it's not going to be happy for the person they say oh i had a marketing job oh my god how is he gonna cope how is she gonna cope it's worse when it's a she <laughs> so marketing is something that a lot of people that we are somehow programmed not to embrace yet it is a life wire of any successful venture because People need to know you're doing stuff before they can even say, oh, I want that, or identify their wants in the midst of your solution, right? I was one of those people that could not. I could not market my business, and I, it took me years to be able to come to a place of acceptance to be able to even tell you how, how why this happens, what I did about it, and how you can overcome it. And first of all, poverty does a number on most of us. Trust me. Poverty, sometimes we think it's just a lack of money. It's beyond that. It's a programming in your mind that makes you feel like, no, it can't be me, right? Um, the rich are there and I'm just somewhere here. Overcoming cold feet in my own marketing, I had to start thinking why am i not comfortable if you're someone who always see yourself at, at a place where marketing scares you it makes you have anxiety it makes you start and stop start and stop and many times you get frustrated that when you begin to market sometimes you get a few sales here and there especially if you do an online business right but whenever you don't market it looks like cricket right and then you keep doing that on and over and all and then it gets to a point where you actually think there's no need marketing this and I do. There's no need marketing this or something I've created. There's no need trying to help people. That's a lie because something or a set or certain factors are responsible. And that's what we're exploring in this video. Why do you feel comfortable marketing, telling the next person about the program in your church, the program in that place, where you went to, a nice place you ate out with friends, another friend's business, even help people convince them, you know, do anything you can to help other people. But when it comes to yours, you will not even ask your friends to help you. And even when you do, you're not quite following enough to make sure they do that. And when it comes to yours, it feels like no. No, 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 don't do this. Before you go talking about imposter stream drama and all of that, that's not the point. I'm going to get there, but just follow me in this video. The first reason why you do that, first of all, is because you're afraid. I had to go for therapy, fear therapy, and I'm not even joking. And I actually have a certification in, in fear therapy and coaching, actually. And that's why I think I shouldn't hold back but share what has worked for me and also, you know, see how to help, okay? Fear of rejection. You're feeling like, if I start talking about what I do, if you think things will happen, people will think I'm desperate. And what's the problem with that, okay? People will think that I don't have any other thing doing, but that is real, real business. So, yes, you don't have any other thing doing. People will think, people will think, people will feel, people will think, some people even feel like their friends will laugh at them. Oh, you have joined them. You have joined all those people who go about, you know, talking about this, that, that, that on the internet or even in real life. How else do you think the world economy works? Is by buying and selling. Buying and selling, sweetie. 
is by buying and selling. There is no other way. Even when you have a lot of money and keep it in the bank, do you know what the bank will do? They will sell your money to an institution so they can make profit on it, make interest on it. So by the time you come back, they take their interest, they make money for the length of time you've kept it, and they give you back your money, most times without an interest or just a little. Money moves around by buying and selling. Yes, that moment you took that um, $10 to go watch a comedy show, you bought a product because you need it. What's the product? You want to feel all right. You want to relax. You want to feel happy. You want to feel leisure, like, you know, you are pampering yourself. You deserve to just relax and have fun. That's what you're buying. And that's what the comedian is selling. You buy it without guilt. So you shouldn't also be afraid that people are going to reject your own product. If people can sell something as funny as laughter, making you laugh, you shouldn't feel fear of rejection. But I'm just telling you things that cost your cold feet when it comes to your marketing. Now look at it like this. Many times in Nigeria, we talk about village people, village people, village people. Village people is actually you. You know, now we do ourselves. Like, you're the one stopping yourself. You're the one standing in your own way. Fear of rejection. How will people perceive my product? Is it okay? What will they say? Will they buy? I deal with a, with a few people and you hear them immediately, you, you know, we say, okay, let's put it out for sale. They'll say, oh my God, there's no money in the economy. People will not buy this now. This People are more concerned with um, consumables. <laughs> Something is doing a number on you and we're going to get that fixed right away because you deserve to be all that you want to be. Now, the second thing that is making you cold feet is that you don't believe enough in that service or in that product that you are selling. Yes, you don't. Um, yes, I know you're going to fight me and say, No way! I invested so much money in doing this. So much time, so much days. I've even paid a coach to do that, 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 that. If I don't believe in it, I won't, I won't be selling it. Oh yeah, calm down. Calm down. Yes, you may think, but you do not really believe in the value that that product, that that service will give the next person who needs to buy it. If you do, let me tell you why you do, I think you don't believe in the value. You don't understand that what you have created or what you're selling is somebody's headache, somebody's pain point, is somebody's lifesaver. So if you understand it, oh gosh, you will not look back. I know this because I had to tell myself the truth at some point. Like Jenny, if you really, really, really love people enough, if you really, really understand that this thing you've created, this course you've created, this book you've written, these doors you're selling, you're supposed to sell to construction company. This cement, this mixture knowledge, the, the knowledge of how to mix the right concrete to prevent collapse of buildings. This, you know, whatever it is. If you know the value and the lives is going to change, you will not bat an eyelid what anybody thinks. So sit yourself down and maybe with paper and pen, calibrate what value will my product or my service give to the right owner, to give to the right customer, to the person who needs it. Of course, number three is imposter syndrome. <laughs> that thing that makes you feel like, oh my gosh, these people don't know the real me. I'm dishing out all of this knowledge, all of this talent, all of this. But if they know me in my bedroom, in my, in my family, I'll be very ashamed. I don't want anybody to find out so much about me. I feel like a fraud. I don't feel I deserve this. And let me tell you, imposter syndrome is actually a problem of high achievers. Uh, so I like to approach it from that angle because it's true. Nobody who is low is afraid of failing or is afraid of what people will think. They say something like, he that is down fears no fall, right? Many people who don't have a lot of certificates, they didn't go to school, they're not really about personal development and stuff, they are usually the ones that succeed. Have, have you discovered that? Because they don't have anything to lose in that sense. So they plunge in into an industry. They plunge in, they take the risk to succeed. But you are the one that, oh, 
you have a first class, you have four degrees, you're working on another PhD, you have gone to this business school in Rome, in China, in Nigeria, everywhere, you are top notch, you've been on board of companies, you are doing one or two businesses, you're paying a few thousand you know a few thousands to a few staff who are depending on you so you feel like a big deal but you feel quite mm, something is missing i might need one more maybe have a degree would do it maybe just one more maybe if i, if I can you know raise a loan of this amount you're looking for validation you're looking for something to make you feel like now you are qualified to give this while the average person who didn't go to any of this is leading in your industry. Mm, check. Check well. They didn't have to go to no school. They didn't have to go to no business school. They didn't have to even know your God. And that takes me to the next point. One or another reason, which is the fourth, that you are constantly shortchanging yourself, not wanting to market what you do, and feeling comfortable staying broke, is that you are religious, but not spiritual. Yes, you heard it right. And I and I don't mean it in a bad way, but it's the truth. Remember, I'm telling you about me. Religious, born in church, went to church, you know, started singing in choir at nine, got born again. I still remember as a teenager, led one of the most powerful solos in the one of the biggest choirs as a child. You know, don't stop. But still deflect the awesomeness when people tell me oh your, your your cloth is nice this is this you still feel like oh my god really because you don't know god that's the truth if you know god <sighs> you, the thing is you can absolutely overcome these barriers to your marketing. See, there is no wealth, there is no money without marketing and to the right people. We're going to get to where, you know, other things that might be causing frustration and making you go back and forth. But now let's go to the root of the problem. Why do you constantly know within yourself that I am awesome. I've produced one of the best solutions to humanity or in this industry and all that. But yet, you are not making money as the other people who you know don't even have 10% of your, of your value, of your resource, of the solution you have packaged. What is the cost of the problem? You need to sit down and self-reflect. You need to sit down like I did. I got to a point in 2019, I was to pay for my first ever highest paid online course. And I told myself, I need this. I will invest in this. I will know how these people are doing it. Right? And I paid. At that time, the amount right now, <laughs> my gosh. Thinking about it now, I'm like, oh my gosh. Two years before then, I went for therapy. I began to understand some of these bottlenecks and stuff. So you have to sit down with yourself and ask yourself, why do I feel this way? You must call yourself in a meeting of one and ask yourself sincerely, why do I feel cold feet when it comes to my own stuff? Why do I feel uncomfortable telling people this is what I'm selling but when it comes to other people I don't mind why am I comfortable blaming myself every day because I'm broke I'm blaming myself because I think I know how to get out of being broke but I can't seem to get out of this revolving chair I feel stuck is it fear you must get to the roots is it fear for some people it may not be fear it might just be lack of confidence yeah, so did you, you don't just believe in yourself. You don't just believe that, oh, I have what it takes. Or, or my English is okay. Or my language is okay. I'm able to communicate and that's fine. You can also find out it's something else. It could be something somebody told you as a child. It could be something you saw growing up, a pattern. 
So you need to sit down with yourself in this meeting of one and ask yourself, how do I feel, first of all? How do you feel? Put yourself again in your marketing mode, like you're trying to market one of your courses, one of your products, and pay attention to exactly how you feel anytime you want to make that post on social media and about your business anytime you want to share you know what you're selling anytime you want to tell somebody about it how do you feel in your physiology in your body which part of your body do you feel that agitation i would challenge you to do more research on this and i'm saying right which part of your body do you feel that fear or lack of confidence or anxiety you know or jittery some people actually shake when it comes to just go out there to market Right? That's the number one thing you should do to get to the root of the matter. Sit down and self-reflect. The next thing to do is I had to sit down to identify what I think about my product and services. You know, now it's a different thing for you to create this online course to help men, to help single men get into marriages that are strong, into marriages that can help them build very intentional homes and prevent divorce and all of that is another thing for you to understand how you feel about selling that is another thing for you to understand your belief system about men that you have to market this to is at this point you begin to ask yourself and i use that as an example because that's also one product that i have over the years that i haven't quite marketed so i'm not telling you some you know thing from somewhere Ask yourself, what do I think? Anytime I come to the internet, what about men makes me not want to provide this solution or rather announce this solution? It could be fear of rejection that they were going to say, no, they're going to say, oh, you're a woman. What is this woman talking about? Why do you think you have what it takes to help men? I mean, you want to be sugar mommy for young men. Why are you, you know, targeting young men? It could be anything. It could even be what would be your family members think. What is your belief system around this product and service that you have created? Next, thing number two. What do you believe about yourself? The first one I said, what do you believe about this product or service, right? Now, what do you believe about yourself? It could be that you have studied a few things in the past. You didn't pull them through. You started and stopped. So you somehow, something you tell you don't start again because you have a way of breaking people's hearts. You might not sustain it. You know, you might struggle with pricing it. So you're self-doubting yourself. You're even afraid that, okay, what if people buy in, in large number? Because sometimes I know that then I used to feel like, go back to watch this course. If it's a course I created, I'll go back to watch it to know, is it really awesome? And many people would have taken it and given very good testimonials. And I would still be doubting like, let me go watch it by myself. Let me go play it again to be sure that they're not just trying to make me feel good. <laughs> So think about your belief about yourself. Do you see yourself as ready, as deserving of success? Next thing you need to think about in this stage too is think about what do you believe about selling? Do you take it as something that is lower than you, something that graduates shouldn't do, selling shouldn't, you know, should be outsourced to lower people, lower income people, while you just boss around them and give them instructions? Yes, people, some people believe that. Selling is something that people who don't quite go to school could go do. People can do leg work for you while you sit back and ideate. Do you believe that, oh, I'm an introvert, so selling is not for me? Think about what you believe about your product or service, about yourself, and then about selling in itself. It will blow your mind what you're going to discover, right? We are taking this step by step. The third thing you should do to overcome this in trying to find the root cause Understand whose child you are. And I don't mean your biological parents, with all respect to them. How did you come to this world? Was it a force that blew you your family way? Is it your father that wished you to come? Or don't you realize that there's a powerful being behind your existence? Do you know this God, the God that made the seas, water in abundance? The God that made the sand, Sand in abundance. Can you imagine the amount of sand in the world? Let's think about it. The amount of water in the world, the amount of air in the world, the amount of stones in the world, the amount of trees and leaves and oh my gosh. The God that made those, 
He only thinks abundance. He only lives in the realm of abundance. And he's giving you that same spirit. But you are not quite connected to him. You don't know whose child you are. You, or do you don't. Sit back again and say, who is God? Why did he say you are also gods? So if God is God, he could create the world with his, with his speech. He could make things happen, change things that are impossible. That, and he said the same DNA is in you. What exactly can I do to get connected back to him? Because see, this third point should have been the first point. It will change your whole thinking. It will change your whole result. See, it's not about going to church. But I'm a church girl. It got to a point I left church for five years and I was just going skeletally. In five years, I didn't go maybe up to six or seven times because I was done with church because I couldn't find... Somehow, I was disoriented. I was like, what's the difference between serving God and those who are not serving God? You know, all of that. Don't let church misrepresent God to you. Sit back and talk to God. Who am I? Why did you bring me here? It will blow your freaking mind. And I don't mean your mind is freaking, but you know what I mean. It will blow your mind. You don't know whose child you are. If you know that God is a God of abundance, it will change the whole game. It will change your whole game. And I charge you, while I struggle with mine, I'm battling them and overcoming them. I need us to go together because this is the gang. This is the Chi Money Gang. We don't walk alone. Never walk alone. This is where you come, drop in the comment section. This is another angle I want you to look at. This is something else I want you to do. If you want me to do another video on how to attract customers to you when you begin to finally market, how to overcome all those self-confidence issues, let me know in the comment section because I'm going right away to do them. I'll be sharing vulnerably with you like this in the coming months and weeks. You don't want to miss any video. So we're going to talk marketing, growth, and all of that as we continue. Thank you so much, Chi Money Gang. I'm Chisum, your girl. And until you come your way again in another video, go and sit down and let's know what exactly is freaking us out about marketing and begin to deal with them by understanding where the root causes are, by understanding the belief system we have about sales, about ourselves, about our products, and also finding out the God that made us, the God that wants us to be rich. Go discover him again, and I'll come to you again with more practical things. You don't want to miss it. All right, bye.